welcome back to another episode of Post Rogue. My name is Kieran, and today we find ourselves at none other than the Resorts World. We're gonna be hopping into 5, 10, or 10, 20. They have both games going, so I'll play whichever one I see fits. Anyways, I appreciate you guys as always. Let's hop into today's episode. Let's start off our World Series of Poker with a bang. All of the winners from the $500 giveaway will be announced at the end of this video. Let's hop into today's episode. <laughs> Today's session is an absolute banger, so don't click away. We get involved in several pots against a very drunk opponent who does not like to fold and does not like to play small pots. So bear with me as we're gonna hop right into today's session which starts off with a freaking heater. In this very first hand, early position decides to limp here. A solid pro decides to isolate him from middle position of 50 bucks. The action folded over to the button. He makes a call. We're in the small blind. We look down at jack nine of hearts. Well, seems like we're getting reasonable pot odds. In reality, we're playing over 200 big lines effective. So I definitely don't mind making a call here and getting a little spicy. Although I am out of position, not fun, but we have a suited jack nine. Seems fair to me. Limper makes a call. And we're going off to a flop that comes king, seven, eight, rainbow. At first glance, it seems like we missed this board, but we do flop ourselves a gut shot as well as some good backdoor equity. Action checks over to the initial razor. He decides to see bet here for a $70 bet. Everyone folds, it gets over to me in the small blind. I decide to make the call to defend at least one time. The limper folds as well, and we're going off to a turn card that comes a jack of clubs. This is nice as we pick up some equity. I decide to check it over to my opponent, and after a brief moment, he decides to check it back. We're going off to a river, hoping to improve or just get the showdown. And the river comes, a deuce of spades. This doesn't change anything. I actually do something pretty interesting here. I haven't done this in a while, and this is literally the first hand I think I've sat down to play at. So I decided to do something interesting and throw out a blocker bet. I make it 50 bucks, hoping to not get raised. And um, yeah, we're just trying to get through a cheap showdown. My opponent does not like the sound of that. After a brief moment of thinking, he makes it $240. The interesting thing is here that we have a really relevant blocker and the blocker is that beautiful nine of hearts. We block the suited combinations of 10, nine that he can have here, which there's only three combinations of those left. So it's nearly impossible for my opponent to have the nuts here, but my range is reasonably uncapped. When he raises here, I don't think he can ever have better than maybe two pair that was super sneaky like King Jack. But more than likely, he's going to have a one pair holding, in my opinion. He's going for thin value raise. So after a brief moment of thinking, this feels like a wonderful time to throw out the blocker three bet out of nowhere. I make it $1,000 to go, going 5x. So I go from block betting to polarizing. I don't know what freaking GTO Superstar book is teaching you this. I'm not trying to teach you this, but... This is the only way I can see myself winning the hand. I put my opponent on a hand like ace, king, or king, queen, and I think he's definitely a really solid player, thinking enough to at least make the fold. At least that's what I'm banking on. It seems like that bank is gonna be cashing my check as my opponent reluctantly throws his hand into the muck. Luckily enough, this gentleman, he was really nice about it. Later on when we talked about the hand, talked a little bit about strategy, and he was kind enough to let me know that he folded ace king. So an unbelievably big fold by him. Happy we made the play, and I'm just happy he's a strong enough player to even consider folding and eventually doing so. I'm gonna ask you guys for some forgiveness here. Just after the last hand, I usually stop the recording, and that's what happened here. I didn't realize I wasn't recording and we're in a bomb pot that's fairly relevant, so let's go over it quickly. Everyone is putting $40 in the middle and six out of the eight players decide we're down to do a two board no limit hold'em bomb pot. So let's go off to a flop six ways where we find ourselves from the cutoff with the top flop coming nine, nine deuce and the bottom one coming six, seven, nine with two clubs. Surprisingly in a bomb pot, it's no limit, fair enough, but we end up checking it all the way through. Going to a turn card on the top board that comes out an eight of hearts and on the bottom board that also comes out an eight of diamonds. At first glance, I don't realize it, but after my opponent from middle position who's that action drunk player we were talking about earlier, he leads out for $120. With the action now, folded over to me, we realize that we have a straight on one of the boards and two overs on the other board. It's going to be really hard to be getting, you know, scooped here. I think it's nearly impossible. So I end up making the call. The big line makes a call as well. Three ways to a river card that brings an ace of hearts on the top board, bingo, and a four of spades on the bottom board, Yahtzee. At this point, the action player does something very interesting by betting $720. Shout out to Tony Hawk. Before the 900, there was a 720. I think that's how the math works out. 
after making sure it took me about 10 to 15 seconds to double check in no limit hold'em i don't believe there's a single hand that can beat me even if he has jack 10 which would be the nuts I would win on the top board, but I'm sure somebody in the comment sections will correct me and say it is possible, but I don't think it's possible for me to get scooped here. So I make the flat call and the big blind goes deep into the tank. And at that point I realize I should have jammed just because I cannot lose to the opponent in front of me. Doesn't mean that the opponent behind me can maybe have a better ace. Like if he has ace king of clubs or something, he could have, you know, rivered me there and then I can get quartered where I lose the, the top board and then I only win half of the bottom board. So I think retroactively I should be thinking about that. I should have just jammed, but not too happy with that. Luckily for us though, the big blind does make the fold. Our opponent shows 10-5 offsuit. So he also had a straight on the bottom board, but on the top board he has nothing. So we're able to three quarter win the pot here. We quarter him and another massive pot coming in our direction, even though we do lose 25% of it to him. Nice way going. Okay, moving right along, finally got some more video for you guys. Again, thank you again for being so, you know, understanding of that. This next hand, we are folded all the way to the small blind, and we're not going to be chopping in collection games, so I decide to play here after the opponent asks me. I make it $30 after looking down at ace, nine of spades. My opponent makes a call. We're going off to a flop that comes jack, five, six, with two diamonds and a spade. Pretty reasonable board for our range here. We're going to be fairly wide, I feel like. So I end up see bidding for 40 bucks. My opponent makes a call. We're going off to a turn card that comes a beautiful seven of spades. We now pick up a ton of equity, open ender, an over, as well as a flush draw. The action is squarely onto me. I think the only thing I can do here is bet big. Sure, I can check sometimes and maybe even check raise if I'm feeling real spicy, but why not apply maximum pressure? I decide to bet $150. My opponent goes into the tank before eventually saying the beautiful words fold. Luckily for us, we're going to take it down and even more lucky when the opponent lets us know that he folded a jack. Don't know how he folds a jack to just one barrel, but the one thing I can promise you and promise him is I was going to blast the river no matter what it came. As long as it wasn't a diamond, I was pretty confident I was going to blast it off. I'm going to be totally honest with you guys. This is the first time in a while where I sat down for a cash game session and I was feeling a little anxious and kind of the butterflies. You know, the realization that I'm here, the World Series of Poker is just around the corner. It's happening. It's all like that excitement, that thrill I get when I play poker is coming back. Although, sure, tournament poker doesn't do great for the vlog, it... It just adds a level of spice. There's some kind of, I don't know, magic potion in the air. You could see it. The games are great. It's a good time here in Vegas. Under the Gun decides to limp here. I'm next to Act, plus one. I decide to isolate for 50 bucks. We're playing six or seven hat at this point as we're getting moved into the main game. The limper decides to make the call, and we're going off to a flop that comes ace, ten, deuce, two spades, and a diamond. You can hear from a little bit of the table talk here. That's fair, that's fair. <laughs> that's very good for me. I think I can bet any amount and you have to fold. What? No, 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 you're playing dirty game. Right <laughs> Pretty fun to have a little bit of banter like that. We're going off to a turn card that comes a six of clubs. Doesn't change a whole lot to the board texture. There's still that flush draw out there that is obviously nagging at us here. When the opponent checks it over to me, I pretty quickly decide to check it back. We're going off to a river card that comes in nine of clubs. Sure, there's some random straights that get there, but more than likely, the only real hand that improves would be 10-9 suited, I think. Otherwise, we're pretty confident with our holding. With the action checked to me, I decide to value bet here for $150, and the limper instantly folds. We throw our hand into the muck. Everything's regular until the unthinkable happens. I knew it. What? What? Yeah, what? You never know. Yeah. What? Are you cold for flop? Yeah. What? Whoa. She, she acted. She checked the street. Oh my god. I will check, 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 check all the time, right? Yeah, <laughs> we, we checked all the time. <laughs> Look how we play three, right? We play a <laughs> What the fuck just happened? Oh my god. As you guys can see from the video, I, as well as the opponent to my right, had no idea that the small blind was even involved in this hand. She is, and she does have an option to call this bet. It's just a weird, a really weird situation. I don't even know what to do, but my opponent is in the tank before eventually deciding on a call. Luckily for us, we did have a value hand. We shot on our ace jack, and it is in fact good. Wow, that was, that was crazy. That was freaking weird. 
just quickly stepping out as I was just called for the table change, which is a good thing because we're following the action player over to the new table. Man, I don't know if I explained it properly in the last hand, but the reason that was crazy is because that's the first time I think I've ever not realized somebody was in hand for the whole hand, even to the point where even the other player folded out of position or out of turn because he thought it was on him. Like us two both thought we were playing hands up in that last hand. So I don't know. Anyways, it somehow worked out for us. We got called by Weaker on that river. So we're going to go ahead and take it either way. This game is amazing. Like by miles anytime you get somebody that's willing to just you know go in blind and just he's he's raising like 17x so but the good thing is he's here to have a good time and i hope that means we're here to have a good time so yeah let's hop back in there Alrighty, folks, this is your chat pro hand of the day. So get those comments ready because, again, this is my new favorite thing of the vlog. I look forward to every single session, and I hope you guys do too. I find myself under the gun plus one. We look down at king, queen of hearts. We're going to go ahead and raise it up to $30. The cutoff, the small blind, and the big blind all make the call. We're going off to a flop that comes queen, five, deuce, rainbow. Beautiful board for us here. I'm going to go ahead and see bet when it's checked to me for $70. A little bit on the larger side. We're looking to target a bunch of middling pairs, eights, nines, tens, jacks, all those random holdings, as well as inferior queens. Only the small blind makes a call, and we're going off to a turn card that comes a nine of diamonds. This now introduces a backdoor flush draw, as well as maybe a couple of his random floats improved to a gut shot straight draw. King Jack, King 10 come to mind. When the opponent checks it over to me, I think that checking this back and protecting our range makes a lot of sense here. Again, he's gonna have a ton of random middling pairs, so I'm either way ahead or way behind, it feels like. I make the check back, playing fairly conservative. And we're going off to a river card that is a very innocuous six. Doesn't change anything, the flush does not come in. And when the opponent checks it over to me, I feel like at this point he probably has a middling pair or a queen jack or queen 10, and we've got to go for some value. After a little bit of thinking of what to bet, I decide to land on the beautiful number of $240. It is a pretty meaty bet. I cannot say that it's not, but again, I'm just targeting what I believe is a one pair holding that just can't make the fold that I'm beating. I have the second nut kicker and from the small blind to just have a flat here, I'm almost never worried about ace queen. The unthinkable happens though, as you guys can see out of the corner of the camera, I believe, the opponent from the small blind decides to raise to $800. Yes, you heard that correct, $800. Over 3xing my river bet here, even though I bet massive on the river, he goes even massive. Er, er. And at this point, I'm going to pause the video and give you guys five seconds. And if you guys need a little more time, pause the video and write down below, what do you think I should do? Should I call this bet? Should I fold to this bet? Am I ridiculous enough to go for thin value and raise for this bet? I'm going to leave that up to you guys. I snap call instantly. Snap. I could not have called any faster. His line makes absolutely no sense. After I call, he immediately says, good call, I have ace high. Beautiful, this, I mean, we're, I think angels are singing in my ears at this point. We have been playing A plus poker, and even when they're bluffing, they're not even making like a ton of sense. Uh, he would later tell me that he had ace four, so he was blocking, I guess, the nut straight, but it's just, it just doesn't make sense. How often is small blind calling with three, four? I don't know. It doesn't feel very often, especially against an early position raise. So I just wasn't buying the story he was selling. And that's how we ended up on this river, winning a massive, massive pot, catching a punt, fair catching it. It's fun to be on the receiving end. Usually I'm doing the punting, but today we're making big folds. We're playing well, and I don't even think we've lost a hand to this point that's any meaningful size. As the session continues to age like some fine wine, I'm not exaggerating. I've sun run this whole session. We're going to be going into this next hand where the same player as the last hand decides to raise the button to $30. I'm in the big blind, and we look down to ace jack offsuit. This plays beautiful as a call. This plays beautiful as a three bed. I'm going to go ahead and just make the call and protect my... Just calling flatting range, blah, blah, blah. You guys don't need to hear that a million times. We're going off to a beautiful flop that comes 10, 9, 8 with two diamonds and a heart. We flop ourselves a backdoor flush draw, an open-ended straight draw, and two over cards. With the action checked over to my opponent, he decides to see bet for a larger sizing of $40. Two-thirds pot means he has some reasonable holding here. It's hard for him to have a complete air ball. I don't think ace, king, ace, queen are betting this big on this flop. So I end up making the call proceeding with caution. We'll go to a turn card that comes a beautiful ace of spades. Pretty much sums up today's session. Even when we're not looking for an exact thing, another thing comes out and it still helps us. 
I check it over to my opponent and he's not done betting. He bets $100. I don't know how this impacts his range. I just don't feel like ace high is he betting this flop, especially when I'm holding the ace of diamonds. It's just, it just doesn't add up too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the call, proceed with caution. And the river card comes the eight of diamonds. So we do have the ace of diamonds, so it blocks the nut flush from existing. My opponent can't have it as being that I hold the ace of diamonds. After a bit of thinking, I consider sometimes, you know, like, should I ever lead out here as a bluff and bet big? Can he ever fold like ace queen or ace king if he did see bet with that? And I decide that that'd be just a complete punt. I feel like I should check and allow my opponent to bluff if he wants to bluff or value bet with inferior if he wants to do that. So I check it over to him. He pretty quickly checks it back. We show our hand and he shows us 10-7. So he flopped himself top pair and an open ender. So pretty massive spot there for the both of us. I'm surprised not more money got in the middle somehow, but it seems like we were both playing it fairly cautiously. So the gentleman at this point has been, he's, he's, he's had enough in him. You know what I mean? He's got, got, got quite a few in him at this point. He's saying that this next hand he's raising blind no matter what. We look down at ace jack offsuit from early position. He's in the, the straddle on the, I don't know what they call it in other places. Some people call it sleeper straddle, Mississippi straddle, but... He's on the button and he straddles to 20 bucks. I make it $60 to go with ace jack offsuit. Folds over to him and he announces that he blind raises to $200 with about $650 behind. The action folds back over to me. I'm not doing anything ever besides raising all in here. He doesn't even have 80 big blinds behind. So it seems to me like this is, this is a pretty slam dunk situation. I end up jamming it all in here. He slowly peels his cards, and uh, he did, in fact, I guess, look at his hand blind, or not look at his hand at all, excuse me. And he ends up folding his hand into the muck, asking, why didn't I just call so we could see a flop? And the reason is, is because, uh, yeah, if I can print 200 some odd dollars for free pre-flop, I'm going to take the chance. And I don't have the clip continue to run. This is Kieran being a complete moron. So just bear with me on this little story that I want to add to this. In the very next hand, he does the same thing from the cutoff. He raises to whatever, $50, just grabs a bunch of chips randomly. To his left, three bets him, and he blind calls. The flop comes out king-10 high, and he just blind bets pot. The guy calls. The turn comes. He just blind rips it in again, and uh, he has nine or eight, seven offsuit. So that is going to be showers for him. His session is over. And that means we're not going to be playing much longer. The table's actually pretty good. There's some really solid players in here. And he was the only reason this table was even going, I think, to be honest. This very last hand comes up, and it's a really fun one. The only thing is I don't have any video of it. As you guys hear, I mentioned beforehand, it's a little tough to do all these things at once, especially when the game's this good and there's a lot of talking going on. So just please forgive me. Let's hop into this very last hand. I find myself on the button with jack to clubs. I raise it to $30, the big line makes a call, and we're going off to a flop that comes ace, nine, seven, with two diamonds and a club. We flop ourselves a gut shot as well as a backdoor flush draw, and definitely what feels like range advantage on this board texture. I'm gonna be opening every single suited combination here from the button anyway, so I'm gonna have all the diamonds here. Action checked over to me. I decided to see bet pretty small here for $30. The villain makes a call, and we're going off to a turn card that comes a very interesting three of clubs. We now pick up some more equity to add to our gut shot. And the other thing it does is it allows me to really blast off. With the action checked over to me, at this point, I think it's about time we start polarizing. I make it $150 to go. And again, pretty quickly, my opponent decides to make the call. We're going off to a river card that comes a king of hearts. Doesn't change a whole lot here. I don't think my opponent will be calling me twice with like king nine. So I don't think he improves to many two pairs. And moreover, I feel like ace king's three betting every single time, you know, pre-flop. So with the action checked over to me, at this point, I feel like my opponent either has 10-9 or like a middling ace, something like ace five or ace 10. So after a little bit of thinking, I end up deciding to really put my money where my mouth is. And I bet massive. I bet $500 and my opponent goes deep into the tank. I'm praying for a fold here. Everything has gone our way. This is the first time since the very first hand that we've been put in a tough spot where I'm just looking to get my opponent off a really strong hand. And after quite a bit of tanking, like two minutes, my opponent decides to make the fold. He was actually, you know, nice enough to show us. He flashes the ace of spades as he throws his hand away. Luckily for us, we're able to, to get by by the skin of our teeth. And that's going to conclude today's session. I can't thank you guys enough for watching today's episode. Another absolute banger. We've been on an unbelievable heater. Let's throw it to me. 
afterwards in person to see how we feel after another really killer session. heater from May has now turned in to a June heater. This is just getting crazy. When I run like really good and I'm just like, oh, you know, I just ran really good. But today we earned a couple of pots like that Jack nine hand, getting our opponent to fold exactly what we put them on. It only works if the player is good enough to make the fold. That was awesome. I, I, I feel like we played pretty solid today. Great table. One thing I'm gonna have to ask you guys for forgiveness about is obviously that when I'm playing poker, most of it's so monotonous, it's hard to break it up. It's It, it can be boring, but when the game is this good and it's actually fun, like whether I'm winning or losing doesn't matter like the fact that there's somebody making the game fun and interesting and there's talk and there's a lot of people because of the WSOP the game was actually fun and when that happens I do this thing where I stop remembering that I'm making a vlog so sorry about the fact that we didn't get a couple of the hands-on video forgive me for that I appreciate you guys for always coming through to watch the videos uh, I gotta let you guys know what I was in for today we were in for 3,000 even didn't have to reload at all and we were out for 56.55 profit of 26.55 if my math does me right outstanding day for us there was no straddle on pretty much the whole session except for a couple of hands um and that's whatever we're gonna take nearly 300 big blinds awesome session late night after just doing so much today for the house we've been shopping and just this and that and just it's been a mess and my family hasn't got here yet they get here tomorrow so i have to do it all alone so i think i've earned it i'm gonna go home take a shower decompress and uh yeah thank you guys so much for being amazing and supporting everything that is close to broke. I love you guys all dearly. Have a wonderful day. Stay happy, stay healthy. More importantly, y'all, run good at the tables. Good luck to us in the w WSOP. Deuces, yo. So we've got the video here, the URL. Gonna quickly do five winners. <laughs> One of my winners, uh, Dustin Sullivan. Thank you again for your support, brother. Appreciate you. 100th episode. You're gaining momentum every episode. Love you, brother. Thank you so much, man. You are one of the winners. So get in contact with me. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get you some money there, brother. All right. Next one. Oh, pick up. All right. Here's our next winner. Sarah Randy King Johnson this video please comment down below so we can get in contact with you again congratulations to you senseless apprentice nice one enjoyed all the best for one of the winners congratulations thank you for your comment thank you for your support remember you have to comment down below so i can see you and we can get in contact with you Anna. Anna, great win. Congratulations on the 100th episode. 100 episodes. Thank you so much. I appreciate it very much. So remember to comment down below so we can get in contact with you. I think we have one more winner. Long, too long. Nice, excellent. I'm late, but I commented. Not too late, as you can see. Better late than never. Congratulations. You have won the giveaway. Remember to comment down below when you guys see this video so we can get your money sent over to you as soon as possible. Thank you guys so much for supporting and uh, yeah, have a great day.